Welcome to the St. Michael Fall podcast series. My name is Rene Samadivilla, and I will be leading our meditation today. Our theme this fall is discipleship. May you be blessed for the Christian journey. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him, so he went in and sat at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of extortion and wickedness. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give your alms those things which are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces. Woe to you, For you are like graves which have not seen, and men walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you, lawyers also, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses and consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they kill them, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hinder those who were entering. Here ends the reading. After Jesus has ended his teaching to a large crowd, the scene changes to a Pharisee's home where Jesus has been invited to eat. Hostility between Jesus and those present starts when Jesus does not do the ritual washing before eating. Washing rules were strictly observed by the Pharisees, and they not only ate with those who observed such rules. Of course, today we would not dream of eating without washing our hands thoroughly because of COVID-19. However, the situation at this dinner party in the Gospel of Luke is different. A few words about ritual washing by the Pharisees. It was ritual and not for hygiene because they used as much water as one half of an eggshell would hold. Pouring it on one hand, they would use the other hand to rub the water all over the wet hand. The process was repeated on the other hand. A clean cloth would then be used to dry both hands. This could hardly clean the hands for eating. When the host notices that Jesus did not wash, The stage is set for a confrontation. Jesus pronounces three woes to the Pharisees and three to the scribes who were present. Jesus accuses the Pharisees of concerning themselves with the outside, while the inside is full of greed and wickedness. Although they tithe fine herbs, they neglect justice to those in need of it. And lastly, they are always seeking to be noticed in the synagogues and the marketplace. True discipleship goes beyond the outward sign of cleanliness to an inward condition of purity of heart. When a scribe tries to intercede for the group, Jesus again compares the outward behaviors with the inner intentions of their hearts. The burdens of ceremonial law were many, and these burdens were laid on all around the scribes, but they did not observe these laws. The scribes prided themselves in admiring the prophets as long as they were dead, and they dishonored the living ones with persecution and death. Lastly, Jesus tells the scribes how they shut people off Scripture by making it impossible to understand. None of this is really out of date. 
In our roles in life, we tend to influence people around us as a son, a brother, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a priest. I must be aware of and balance what lives in my heart and how I express it because there are people who may believe what I say with my words and with my actions. So this passage today begs the question, how can each of us show the God that lives in our hearts with our words and with our actions? Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 